virtual systems. Okay everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at virtual systems on Palo Alto Firewalls. This is one of the greatest features that the Palo Alto Firewall has, and it's that you have a beefy firewall, you have a very very powerful firewall, it has a lot of resources, and you have multiple uses for it. So say you want to create some internet rules and you want to also have some server traffic rules. So meaning that you have a completely isolated environment where you have the servers completely isolated from the clients and it is required by the users to traverse the Palo Alto firewalls in order to hit the servers. And then that is where you can apply policies and avoid any attack coming from the user side of your network. But then usually you run on into buy an additional appliance just to do that. Well, in Palo Alto, there's something called virtual systems, and what it can do is it actually can create virtual instances inside the physical device. So if you have a firewall like this one, this is a 5280, I can allocate a set of interfaces to a particular virtual firewall and then allocate another set of interfaces to another instance. So if we want to apply policies that are related to the internet, we apply them to the internet virtual system. If we want to apply a policies that are for the server side or the server firewall, then you apply it to virtual system uh, number three. In this case, you don't need to buy another appliance to allocate it for the specifically the server firewall traffic. You can just create a virtual system inside the physical Palo Alto and create domains. So uh, like I mentioned, I can create a virtual firewall inside one physical firewall. So I can allocate a set of ports for one firewall and then another set of ports for the other one. I can isolate policy. So if I want to make my policy table shorter or more cleaner, I can do that by allocating two completely different firewall uh, instances inside my physical firewall. And keep in mind, this is supported in the 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, and 7000 models. So this is not supported on all the firewalls, but most of the firewalls are those models. So we should be good to go. This is not supported on the lower end, the, 8, the 800s, the 200s nor the virtual firewall. So you want to keep that in mind. On the virtual firewall, you know, you can deploy multiple virtual firewalls. That's not a problem. Uh, but when it comes to maintaining uh, physical devices, you want to make sure that you have a less as possible so you know you don't need to worry about those devices from a management standpoint. Also, you're leveraging the hardware. So you have not that much traffic on the internet side. You might have a lot of traffic on the server side. You don't need to buy another appliance just to serve the server side or the internet side. You can combine both functions while separating the policies between each other. So we'll see this as completely different firewalls, but they're actually one physical appliance. So let me show you how that looks logically. So you have a set of ports. So you configure virtual systems. This enables virtual systems inside the Palo Alto. And then once you enable it, you can create those virtual systems. And I can then select what type of interfaces or which interfaces I'm going to allocate to this particular virtual firewall. And quote virtual because it's basically a virtual instance inside the same physical appliance. And say with the other one, so if you can see my slide here, I have the internet firewall. So I'm going to configure virtual system number two. Virtual system number one, remember, it's the default virtual system. Every Palo Alto will come with virtual system one, and then you can continue creating virtual systems. I can select two ports for a specific virtual system. In my case, I'm just selecting this whole range so you can take an idea or take a look. Uh, I want to take two 40 gig ports, but I want to also take SFP ports for 10 gig connectivity, as well as uh, one gig for my copper ports. And then I can also create virtual routers and apply it to specific virtual systems. So I can have a routing table that belongs to the internet firewall that the server firewall has no communication whatsoever. So I still need to have routing between the two virtual firewalls in order for them to communicate with each other. So you got to make sure that once you configure this type of environment, there's no way like it can route leak between the two. You definitely need to have a path in order for this communication between firewalls will happen. So long story short, you have a bunch of ports that you're going to allocate to the virtual system. You can select either one or as many as you want, as long as you have them available and they're not allocated to any other firewall. Same with the other side. So I have a server firewall and I'm actually allocating the range below. So it's very straightforward. Once we enable a virtual systems, you create the virtual systems and then allocate the interfaces and everything else is pretty much the same. I'm going to show you on one firewall that I have. It's in production, so I'm going to be blacking out some configuration settings, but it's very straightforward. So you enable virtual systems, you allocate the ports that you want on that virtual system, and then you configure the policies on the particular context. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so once we log in onto the firewall, we're going to click on device, and then inside device, in the setup section under management, 
we're going to have the option to enable virtual system capability. So once we enable that, we're going to have the option to configure those virtual systems. So the step one will be go into device, setup, and management, and then check mark virtual system capability. So I'm going to just click real quick. And then you see here, I can enable virtual system capability. Once I do that, then I'm going to have the option to configure those virtual systems. Let me show you how that looks. And I'm going to be blocking out. This is a production firewall. But I'm going to show you that I have my default virtual system and I got virtual systems two and three. And then inside here, I can allocate the interfaces that will be related to each virtual system. If you see AE, AE, those are link aggregation interfaces, or if I LACP or port channel interfaces. So I grab two physical interfaces and I created an AE interface or a group. So this is basically allocated to virtual system two. And then virtual system three, I got a couple of other ports as well. So once we have that, it's basically the same thing. So we go into policies. And then I can find the policies that are related to a specific virtual system, or then I can configure policies for each individual firewall. So you have the option to do the policies on either firewall. So imagine like you have two firewalls inside the same physical appliance and everything else is pretty much the same. So if we go to NAT, it's the same thing on that. I have the default virtual system, but then I can select any other of those virtual systems. And, and yeah, I can figure the policies. And once I committed the changes, it's just going to commit it to the firewall itself, but it actually applies to the particular virtual system. Everything else is pretty much the same. If we go to network and virtual routers, I have a virtual system allocated for this particular virtual router and as well as for this particular virtual router. And there you have it. It's pretty much the same. The concepts are the same once you create the virtual system you have imagined yourself that you just created two firewalls and configure the ports individually like you were doing on your standalone unit and you should be good to go so this is a quick demonstration virtual systems you enable it you configure virtual routers allocate a virtual router to the particular virtual system and allocate the interfaces and you're done that's about it okay everyone in our next video we're going to begin section 7 ipsec vpn tunnels and global protect Thank you for watching.